Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is a periodic table, and in particular, how to read a square on it. You'll need to refer to the periodic table in homework and on tests, especially if you're planning on taking a standardized test like the SAT subject test or the AP exam. So let's get down to it. There are three main parts to a square on the periodic table. The chemical symbol, first up. That's the letter or letters in the middle. It'll represent your element when you write out a compound or a chemical equation. For instance, CO2. This C represents the element carbon in carbon dioxide. Next up is the atomic number. That's the number on top, in this case is 6. That's the number of protons you can find in your element. The number of protons will stay the same for every element because it determines the element's properties. Carbon will always have 6 protons, nitrogen will always have 7, so on and so forth. Last is the atomic weight. That's the number on the bottom. That's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if you want to find out the number of neutrons, just subtract the atomic number. Now, it's calculated in AMU. That's atomic mass units. Every proton is one AMU, and every neutron is also one AMU. So you might wonder why this isn't a whole number, since we're only working with whole numbers. That's because it's an average. There exist these things called isotopes, versions of an element with different atomic weights. That's because they have different numbers of neutrons. See, an element can have more or less neutrons, but still have the same chemical properties. Now, let's move on to an example. We're going to take something from nuclear chemistry, which, although it's pretty advanced, is actually pretty easy with the information we just learned. So let's take uranium. This is how we write an element out in nuclear chemistry. Up here we have atomic weight, and down here we have atomic number. And let's just say it's split up into 226 radon, and an unknown element, and you were asked to find what element that was. In nuclear chemistry, all you have to do is make sure your numbers are the same on both sides. We have a total atomic weight on this side of 238, and a total atomic number of 92. Over on this side, we already have 226 for atomic weight, and 86 for atomic number. Well, we subtract this from here to find out what we've got left over. Doing so for atomic weight will give us 12. And you might see where this is going. Doing it down here, subtraction 92 minus 86 will give us 6. Remember, when determining what an element is, go by the atomic number. Looking on the periodic table, or really right over here, we've got it 6 for carbon. And so now you know what your element is and how much it weighs. To recap, there are three main parts to a square on the periodic table. Your chemical symbol, the letter or letters in the middle, which will represent your element in compounds and in chemical equations. Your atomic number, which is the number of protons. That stays constant for each particular element. And lastly, the atomic weight. That's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It's not always a whole number because of isotopes, where elements have more or less neutrons. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.